Mr. Holmes, can you spare me a few hours of your valuable time? We had a very painful incident at the college. Oh, really? I must explain to you. Tomorrow is the first day of the examination for scholarship. Today about 3 o'clock the proofs of this paper arrived from the printers. I have to read them carefully as the text must be absolutely correct. At 4.30, however, I left to take tea in a friend's room. My task was not yet complete. So, I left the proofs upon my desk. I was absent for more than one hour. When I returned I was amazed to see a key hanging in the door. This duplicate key belongs to my servant Bannister. He is an honest man. I thought he might have entered my room to ask for tea. Then he might have carelessly left the key in the door. Please continue. The moment I looked at my table, I was aware that someone had reached my papers. The proofs were in three long slips I had kept them together. Now, I found that one of them was lying on the floor. One was on the side of the table and the third was where I left it. Very interesting. A large sum of the scholarship money is at stake. A wrong person might gain advantage over other fellows. When I talked to Bannister about this, he was nearly fainted and collapsed in a chair. Do you help me? Mr. Holmes. Either I must find the culprit or the examination must be postponed. I shall be very happy to help you. Did anyone visit you in your room when you were reading the papers? Yes, Steve, a student. Who lives on the same floor. He came to ask me something about the examination. None else? No. Then it appears that Steve alone could know about the papers. So it seems to me. Let's go to your house and examine it. Tudor's room was on the ground floor. Above that lived three students, Steve, Gilchrist and Ralph. One at each story. Holmes examined the room, papers and locked at the open window. He thought for a while. On the papers there are no fingerprints, but there are some pencil shreds. On the table there are some grains of sawdust. Will you please call Bannister in? I understand that you have left the keys in the door. Yes, sir. I have done this mistake other times also. When did you enter the room? It was about 4.30. That is Mr. Soames' tea time. Did you look at the papers on the table? No, sir, certainly not. I had tea tray in my hands, so I thought that I would take the key later on. That means anyone can go inside and get out of it? Yes, sir. Were you here when your master left to meet me? Yes, sir, only for a minute. Thank you. You may leave now. I want to talk to your three students. Is it possible? Yes, of course. Mr. Solmes, I wish you good night and I will drop early in the morning tomorrow with a definite answer. Good morning, Mr. Solmes. Mr. Solmes, I had solved the mystery. Gilchrist is the culprit. Now, can you please call Gilchrist in? Now Gilchrist, I want to know why did you commit such an action? Room's window was open, I tried to measure how tall man would be to see the papers through the window while he passed. Only a six foot tall man could do it I found out that Gilchrist was six feet tall and also long jumper he was practicing jump. He came back carrying his jumping shoes which has had sharp spikes. As he passed your window he saw the proof papers. He entered through the open door and put his shoes on the table and hence the scratches on the table. He put his gloves on the chair near the window and took the proof papers to copy he wrote very fast and broke his pencil and had to sharpen it again. And these pencil shreds helped me to find out the culprit. Looking at these shreds I could make out that the pencil was not of ordinary size. I found the same pencil in Gilchrist's room. Thank you so much. Mr. Holmes. You're welcome. Do you did it Gilchrist? Yes, sir. I have a letter with me in which I have written that I will not take the examination. 
But why did you change your mind? There is a man who set me on the right path, Bannister. He spoke to me as my father and made me understand what I did was wrong. So I changed my mind and decided not to take the examination. You are a young man with a bright future. For once you have fallen low. Let us see in the future how high you can rise.